you will be um, to hear from our next speaker. I guess it's one of those uh, truisms of mankind throughout history that the older generation always says, well, you know, things just aren't as good as they used to be. And those kids today, they're just not quite up to the level that we were. And I, you know, you always hear this. Then the next generation seems to come along and uh, oftentimes do it way better than we ever did. And we have, you know, our theme for this convention, where the stars are bright, we have an example today of someone who, at a very young age, is out to change the world, and who makes that whole truism that I just mentioned absolute bunk. Shubham Banerjee, who moved with his family um, to the United States at a very young age, he can tell you more about it, um, came here and decided he had a vision. Like many of us in this organization, we have things we wanted to change. Well, he wanted to make the world a better place for blind and low vision individuals in developing countries who didn't have access to Braille the way that we are so fortunate to do. So he decided he was gonna do something about it, and he did. He invented a low-cost Braille printer, and he and his family have gone on to work with others um, for the establishment of Brago Laboratories, and so it's not just an idea that Mr. Banerjee has had, it's something that is going to be happening and going to change the world. And without any more ado, I want to present a truly shining star, a young man by the name of Shabam Banerjee. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, this is Dan Sippel, uh, president of RSBA, and it is with true honor that we uh, bring to you an, a very inspiring gentleman. Uh, we had breakfast this morning, and we were talking in, in, in this very humble, humble uh, manner. He was inspired by a fundraising brochure delivered to his home. And he thought, what can I do for these people? You know, and this is a few a couple of years ago, uh, and he wasn't even a teenager yet. So he grabbed his Lego kit and created a Braille printer. Now he is the founder of Braille. I give you Shabazz Energy. Good morning. Um, I just want to thank um, the American Council for the Blind and uh, Randolph Shepard, Vendors of America, for giving me this platform to speak to y'all. And uh, so, yeah, so uh, I guess let's talk about my journey. Um, it, it's great to see you all here. Um, I feel so awesome to stand up on the stage and uh, talk to you guys. And uh, yeah, uh, forgive my stuttering and uh, mistake because I'm really nervous right now. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, so basically, in, in December of 2013, a flyer came to, to my house asking for donations for the blind. And, um, you know, me being me, I guess my wheels started grinding and I was just wondering what, how would a visually impaired person read if he got this flyer? And I guess I, I sort of asked my parents. You know, how do visually impaired people um, read? And they're quite busy, so they said, you know, don't bother me, go and Google it yourself. <laughs> so I did go Google it, and I researched about the visually impaired, and I found out about Louis Braille and how he invented the Braille language, and that there's Braille printers. And I realized that one Braille printer can cost up to $50,000, and they start up to $2,000. And I realized that, you know, it would be it'd be really hard for 
you know, normal average person to afford that, especially counting the, the 30 million legally blind people uh, living in developing countries, um, it'd be very hard for them to pay for a braille printer. So my school science was coming up and I put that aside and I wanted to do something, you know, just a school science project, nothing big. So I decided to do something with plants and um, I would have three plants with different colors of lights and uh, how that affected. And my mom came in and said, no, you can't do that, you have to do something better. So I put that aside. And so I guess thanks to my mom, I wouldn't really, if it weren't for her, I wouldn't really be here right now. Um, so yeah, so I, I went back to that idea and um, those thoughts and I figured out that I actually wanted to do something. And I've been loving Lego ever since I was two years old. I've been playing with normal Lego kids and um, this is where I really wanted to do something with the Lego. And so I asked my dad to buy me the newest robotics kit, the EV3. And since it wasn't really an Xbox or a game that I really wanted, it came in the next day. <laughs> so, and he was, he was thrilled and to see me, a 12 year old guy, um, just do, to just start on a really cool project and it just hit off from there. Um, I felt, I mean, I felt like I should do something about this that these braille companies that are making braille printers shouldn't be making these braille printers at such a high cost. Thank you. So I sat there for many days. Um, it took about a month for the whole process. I sat there when I came back from school until 2 o'clock in the morning. I would have a final the next day. I didn't really mind. I had to get this project done. Um, I just kept on per persevering and uh, going through it. And in the end, it worked out as Brego 1.0. And uh, it hit the news suddenly, and it just went ballistic. Um, I was appeared on many news channels, and um, basically that was the start of Brago. And um, so after I built Brago 1.0, um, the cost for Brago 1.0, by the way, was $350, um, compared to the $2,000 one, so yeah. <laughs> so after I built Brago 1.0, I guess I got amazing feedback from people all over saying, wow, this is amazing, you know, I really have you did this, and um, so I, I was feeling happy, and uh, it was for free. You can, uh, the downloadable, soft, the, the software is downloadable anywhere, the instructions are completely free to build, as long as you have the EV3 kit, um, but I guess I wanted to do more, and um, I was getting feedback that can you buy this printer off the market? And unfortunately, since it was Lego, it was a DIY, so I had to say no. And uh, of course, me being me again, I started grinding my wheels again. So I thought, why not make another real printer that would be going to the market? And that's when I asked, or I sat down and uh, started to make a legit real printer, not from Legos, but I guess with, um, with real, the chip and all. And uh, before I get into that, I just want to mention that Lego was being really supportive and uh, I went to the White House, I went to the New York Maker Fair, it was just awesome. And, yeah. and uh, they kept on sending me kits and to play with and I was just playing with Lego non-stop. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I moved on to a second version and that was Lego 2.0. I was working with the big company we all know as Intel. And yeah, um, that was on my, uh, after I finished seventh grade, that was my whole summer project to start on Brega 2.0. Um, yeah, so I sat down, I was using, I was originally using the Arduino kits, but I, since my dad went to Intel, I got a head start and we got to work with their new chip called Edison. And that was, uh, I got to play with their new chip and incorporate that into my project and that being Brago 2.0. So Intel has been really supportive and was helping me throughout the whole ride. I came down and to whatever, whatever questions I had, I could ask them and they were basically treating me like family. So once I did create the Brago 2.0, um, I guess it was, it was much faster. It was, um, and what I thought a braille printer should be 
It should be light, it should be quiet, it should be cheap, and it should also be IoT enabled. Um, a couple, an hour, about an hour ago, I walked into a room that had two Braille printers and I felt like closing my ears because it was very loud. <laughs> um, and that's basically what I think, that's my thought of a Braille printer, not a $50,000 Braille printer that's very heavy and very loud. Um, so yeah. And um, basically I built Brago 2.0 and it hit the news again and I really wanted to do something with this. I thought I was going on a path that would uh, lead me somewhere. So I sat down with my parents one dinner and said, hey, why not start a company? And they were flabbergasted with me starting a company. Um, that was weird, but since I did Brago 1.0, it, it was sort of success. They said, you know what, sure, let's do it. And uh, Intel was really supportive, and they actually funded me with venture capital. With venture capital, yeah. And uh, I got to be the youngest person ever to receive funding from a company. And um, basically, it was just a hit ride, and uh, we're not completely done with it yet. Uh, we're still getting the real design for the real Brago that we launch into the market, and for 100%, we know it's going to be less than $500 for sure. After I built Brago, there's some more news. Um, after we started the company, we uh, started getting more involved in having new ideas. We have a ton more ideas that are yet secrets. But uh, one thing for sure that I can share with you guys is that um, we all know how Braille transcribing can cost a lot of money and take some time, right? Yeah. Um, we at Brago Labs, we found out a way to make this whole process completely free. Um, we have, you can, there's a software that I've made that, that's on the chip itself. You can go to any PDF, automatically download it on the servers, and it'll transcribe for you completely free, no charge. Yeah. 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 And um, we also are involved with Microsoft as Brega Labs. Uh, Microsoft is now helping uh, with the servers and all the now the Windows is basically what most um, companies use and most uh, so now that Microsoft has uh, openly said that we are making Brago's um, OS compatible with my, or, yeah compatible with Microsoft. So now any Windows is completely compatible with Microsoft. No one has to install any other down downloadable uh, content. It'll automatically eas easily be um, compatible with uh, Windows. So. And, and, you know, just for um, my journey so far, uh, what I've learned, uh, I learned a couple things. Um, basically, innovate for the right reasons. Money is not really one of them. I learned that, you know, I have my parents um, as money. I can ask them for a game whenever I want. Um, <laughs> the answer might be no, but I can still ask. Um, <laughs> That's, I don't, I, don't, I don't really care about the money, I just really care about who I'm helping and what impact I'm really going to have at the end of the day, and what my goal is. Um, also, is that uh, do social good. Um, yeah, making apps is awesome and all, and it is beneficial. And, but making apps for the right reason is also very good, and that's what I believe is awesome and very beneficial, especially, um, yeah. So, and doing social good is definitely benefit, benefiting, not, not only for the people, but for yourself, because you know you're doing something good, and not only are you helping other people, but you're helping yourself also, and that's what I believe is very important. And also, um, having investors is important. Uh, you can't do it all, all on your own. I learned that uh, when I was 13. I thought I could do it myself, but no. Uh, I had to ask a lot of people, and I had to seek out help from engineers. And um, it, it, they, but they treated like they treated me like family, and uh, it was uh, it was very nice of them that they could help me like this. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for them. So. Uh,
and um, also work for the right team or with the right team. I guess um, two people that really were influential were my dad and my mom. Um, when I was making Brago 2.0, I I didn't really have any investors, and my dad was my only investor. And he went into his 401k, and uh, you know, there he 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 said, "There's no retirement for me. It's all you." So um, yeah, he he basically yeah, backed me up. <laughs> and, um, so basically, I also learned that uh, basically doing doing good at the end of the day is very important and uh, very influential. Thank you. Before I turn it over to um, Kim and Dan Sobel for a special presentation, um, I was thrilled to see as a fellow parent that um, Subhan concluded his um, address to us by mentioning his parents. And for all of us parents, you know, he truly obviously has an awesome mother and father. Let's give another super round of applause for him. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Kim and Dan. We, we truly, um, I want to thank and recognize Randolph Shepard Vendors of America for coming to me and saying that they would partner with us to bring Shabam and his family here so that he could deliver his message to us about his dreams for the future. And ACB are presenting an award, and we're calling it the Innovation and Creativity Award in recognition of your tremendous, uh, and this is from memory, so I do apologize, <laughs> your tremendous um, innovation and spirit of social justice um, for making an accessible Braille printer for people all around the world. So thank you so much for being who you are. Caring so much for literacy for people who are blind. Leonard? Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you, Kim. Thank, that, that is just so miraculous that uh, Shabam, he just entered the teenage world. He just recently saw his 13th birthday. Just think of all of us that what we've, what we've accomplished in our lifetime with our little to college, what can we expect from Shabam in the future? Unbelievable. 